<laughs> yeah, you see my belly there. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, no, just a chair. Okay. I think I'm going to be okay. Well, good. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Grace Chapel at uh, six thirty-four. We're late. We're late. <laughs> we started first. I didn't yeah. Thank you so much. And I think I'll be okay. Let me let me do this. And usually I'll. Just a, a couple of up, updates. Um, hello, everybody. Oh, that sounds a little better. And I want to move over just a bit there for everybody. Um, yeah. Oh, it's been a busy day. So we went up to headquarters and uh, dropped off some, uh, dropped off 20 signs and uh, and uh, let's see, 40 rebar. Uh, 40 pieces of rebar so that we can you know put signs up in the district and uh, that's been a uh, that's been a job so we see some of the signs here in town mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and uh, yeah. so we'll be we'll be uh, traveling all the way up to blue at blue blue arizona yeah it's just south of alpine that's as far as our district goes north and so uh we're, we're going to be doing that and so you know the the uh, last night we were at a um we were at a water meeting for the uh uh, the Wilcox and uh, Douglas Basin. Uh, the EPA uh, was able to, uh, they, they did their presentation was all they did. And uh, so they, they were able to, you know, they were able to present what it was. And I think the EPA did a wonderful job in showing how much regulation and paperwork is going to have to go into and and uh, metering wells and all that kind of stuff you know it's just no. it is oh, it, it no. is just amazing you know it's just a uh, really amazing on what what's going to take place there but it was really good to hear from a lot of different people and uh you know i got i got a couple of phone calls this morning on that and it was kind of interesting and you know you start getting to meet a lot of christians that way too yeah. you really do you find that there's christians everywhere you know <laughs> Yeah, yes. and so it's it's wonderful to be able to be part of those kind of uh, conversations, and uh, one of the things that I was you know just uh, I'm going to let you into an inside secret, so don't tell anybody, okay? okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know, <laughs> you know it's you know, and I've learned this is that you can listen objectively and not commit to anything, and then uh, and then look at it. You know, I don't have to say yes or no that kind of thing. Um, a lot of different viewpoints. There was a lot of different ideas out, out there. There's a lot of ideas that are, are going into the table and they don't have to go into that AMA or IMA or no, INA, uh, an irrigation non-expansion uh, non area. And, uh, and uh, once you establish those, once you establish those two, you can never get out of them, ever. And uh, you know, and there's some really interesting stuff there. I'll have to tell you about that one of these days, because yeah. you know we talked about water rights on um, uh, water rights during uh, our study. And uh, do you remember when Abraham was it Abraham um, that had wells and uh, lots? I guess it was lots, uh, or somebody came in and they they filled the wells up, and then he went over and dug other wells, and it was fine. He didn't he didn't fight it. He just went off and moved on somewhere else. Um, so we have talked about land rights, water rights, uh, you know, personal property rights, uh, you know, those kind of things. And so it's really important to be able to think about that. In fact, in, in, in fact, I'm glad that we're talking about this because tonight I'll be able to mention something about the property rights. Uh, you know, God had, um, God had established um, a portion of land to each of the tribes and uh, they were responsible for that section of property. And we're going to be in uh, in Joshua chapter 11, and we're going to cover three chapters today. I was hoping to be here early, but I was in Sierra Vista and I came back. Um, but I wanted to show you a map 
uh, and there's, it's really interesting. There's a really interesting map there where everybody gets a section of that. So water has been a, a real key thing. Have you guys heard about the whole thing with water? Read any articles, anything with Lake Mead, Lake Powell? Uh, they're calling it the yeah. mega drought now, yeah. you know, and, and it's, it's all, it's, it's, <laughs> it's over. Yeah, the way that it's been raining. Yeah, I was writing, I was uh, writing, I was, I was coming back from Wilcox and I got, man, I got hammered in the yeah, water. Really? I was just going through Texas Canyon in a, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and my, and my, my little car's got this little sensor on it. I don't know if you remember uh, uh, looking at that manual or not, but it'll tell you when you're about to hydroplane. And that line, that light came on, on me uh, about three different times, and I kept thinking, "Better slow down." And I was only doing 55. Wow. But you don't; it doesn't take much to hydroplane. It really doesn't. So pull this, you know, pull pull the speed back, and off we went. You know, that was one of the things. So water has been a um, water has been a thing that you know we we as legislators have been looking at. And uh, we'll have to look at some. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. Uh, all I know is that we passed a billion dollar. Uh, billion dollars uh, to look at and mitigate the water problem here in Arizona. Okay, that's a lot of money. Yes. Wow. However, it says Lake Mead went up. Uh, the water level went up because of all that flooding they've been having in the past couple of weeks. Very good. So it's gone up and it's told that. Yep, okay. But you know, and, and everybody, everything, everything I read in this book tells us that um, if you don't follow God's commandments, uh, one of the one of the things that God does to judge the people is to bring drought, mm -hmm. and I have been teased about it. I have been, you know, quoted. Oh, you know, Representative Diaz uh, thinks that uh, you know that prayer is going to take care of the drought, or no, uh, that you know that this is part of God's judgment. You know, when, when we have all this science, believe the science. <laughs> yeah, we don't believe the science on that kind of stuff. And the reason God judges is because of the immorality, um, the the murderous, the murderous uh, heart that our nation has gotten over abortion, which has now been overturned in Arizona. Yay! Yeah, what's that? That's why we're getting rain. That's why we're getting rain. Amen. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and I, you know when I got quoted, you know that uh, Lupe, you know the only thing that got that Lupe, you know Representative Diaz says, says about the the, the uh, uh, water problem is that um, we need to pray. And I'm thinking, that was be before it started raining. <laughs> so yes, it works, it does work. Um, so, the, uh, so I've been able to, I have made about five different meetings on water. Uh, the last couple of meetings that I went to um, was, one of them was at the University of Arizona, and it was uh, three, three days. Up in at well, one day at the University of Arizona, then the rest of them were Zoom meetings, and and some of it had a lot to do with water. Uh, and, you know, uh, we had water, and then um, the other one that we did was ASU just the other day, last week. That's where I was at that one. Uh, so we uh, they also talked about water again, and it's um, it's much bigger than man. You know, much bigger than what we can do. We can we can do. It's, we got to rely on the Lord. We really have to rely on God on this one and so uh, you know all of the all of the projects and everything you know piping water from the Mississippi you know uh, Wisconsin doesn't want their water they're flooded up there <laughs> you know and uh, you know just uh, bringing water from California but they've got endangered species over there and they like <laughs> endangered species rather than uh, you know rather than growing food for the rest of the country you know that kind of thing and uh, you know, and we can desalinate uh, water from you know, uh, desalination plant will cost uh, you know, it'll cost billions of dollars, and uh, and we're going to trust Mexico with that, yeah. that yeah. kind of equipment. <laughs> I wouldn't, uh, there's, I wouldn't trust them with any of that yeah. kind of stuff. You know, so you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of different plans up there, and then they, and then we also talked about, you know, they were they were talking about the. Um, how you know the scientists are shooting silver up into the uh, into the atmosphere and creating clouds, so it'll rain. But the conditions have to be so just right, uh, and it has to be. I heard it had to be between two mountain ranges, and then the winds and temperature and everything else. 
and then it's just a drop or two that they develop, you know, and say, <laughs> Yoo-hoo, look what we did. <laughs> that's not going to work. That's just not going to work. The only thing that's going to do it is God, you know. And, and the project up here at the, um, you know, there's a lot of different ideas up here. Uh, creating a water district, recharge, uh, new technology. The other one that we met with was really cool because um, we met with um, the Israeli consulate and uh, uh, on water mitigation. And that was really a lot of fun uh, with water mitigation because they, 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 they had some real big problems going on in Israel. And they were going back to the scripture on a lot of this. And then, uh, you know, saying that they, you know, that they could turn the land back into a forest and lush and that kind of stuff. And so they, you know, they've done a lot of different things. And some of the technology that they've used, um, you know, it's just been amazing. Yeah. Um, they got these little pot these little pot things, you know, that they, and there's some kind of a fabric on it that draws the water out of the atmosphere. If there's any humidity there, it'll draw it out and then it'll, you know, drop it into this bucket. And this bucket has a hose, a little, uh, a little line that goes right into the root system of the trees. They got these little buckets all over the place. You know, that's oh, wow. part of Israeli technology. The other one that was really interesting is that uh, uh, they're pulling out um, water out of the Sea of Galilee. Okay, now the Sea of Galilee is just like our uh, some of our uh, waters and that kind of stuff, and there's patches of toxic water in in the uh, in the Sea of Galilee. So they pump that water out of this uh, out of the sea, the the, the, the sea. They, it's going to say ocean, but it's the Sea of Galilee. And uh, you know you know the little the little you know you know the little canary in the mine. Yeah. You know you know the whole idea of the canary in the mine. Yeah. yeah. If, you know, there's gases down there, then they go belly up and you better get out of there. <laughs> they do that with tilapia. There's these big, big uh, tanks full of water coming out of the Sea of Galilee. And these, there's these little fish in there. And if they start going belly up, they shut down the, 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 the pumps because they ran into toxic, uh, toxic wastewater. And they'll divert it, you know, somewhere else. Until, and, and, then, and then they'll test it and then start running the water, replace the fish and then start yeah. running, yeah. running water again. <laughs> By the way, don't eat those fish. <laughs> no, no. So, you know, that kind of stuff. So there's been a lot of neat, neat, kind, of, neat kind of stuff. You know, the, the thing that really interests, interests me on this, and I, and, I, and I hear, you know, I hear from a lot of uh, different people from different places or different Christian from different places that you know we shouldn't get involved in politics and all that kind of stuff you know and 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 i'm thinking about look at look at all the stuff that i just shared with you yeah. you know just just that little piece and you know because we ran a christian school and when you go through the curriculum that we went through on 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 uh, science you know and and biology and that kind of stuff when you start reading about the scientists who discovered a lot of things it's based straight out of the Bible. There are like 42 scientific questions that are in the book of Job alone. In the book of Job. It's just amazing. And, and you know, and Galileo and some of those other people, you know, that they were getting crucified for believing that the world was, uh, was, was round rather than flat. <laughs> oh, I know you flat earthers out there. <laughs> I don't care if the Bible says that there's four corners, uh, you know, to, to that the earth, you know, the, the, the four corners of the, the, of the earth or something like that. That's where they base their, that's where they base their idea that the, the earth is flat. Four corners of the earth, you know, that the angels will be released from the four corners of the earth. But if you go over to the book of Job and it talks about that the earth is, is a sphere and that it rotates on an axis. And what it talks about is the king's seal. It says, as, 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 the, as the king's seals turn, so does the earth. And at that time, it, had, it was a little cylinder, and it rotated on an, on an axis. You know? And these were all attributed to Christian scientists that were saying, this, you know, it's, it's got to look different. It's, it's got to be different. You know? And so... You know, it doesn't matter what people say out there. I know why we're in there. We need we need the Christian wisdom. We need the Christian, you know, we need the, we need the Christian wisdom. Uh, I mean, we need the Christian knowledge of, of the word, and then and then the wisdom out there. 
that and, and there's two there's two you know there's it, there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom one is understanding the wisdom everything and wisdom is how you apply it and i think i ran out no i'm okay i just don't hear me do you all hear me okay yeah all right yeah all right that's good so um Anyway, so that's just a little bit. One of the other things that we're doing, uh, we're doing right now, and I want you guys to look at that and uh, uh, also pray with me. Uh, I didn't know this, and a lot of people don't know this because they, I like to share this kind of stuff. Is um, in um, in legislature uh, every year, and especially this year, because we're going to have, we can have anywhere between sixteen and twenty new seats both Democrats and Republican uh, uh, being filled at the House alone, okay? And uh, so, and I don't know if this happens every year, I just, this is my first, first, first full year, but one of the things that we do is a, as, a, as a caucus, as a Republican caucus or group, the Republican group, we, uh, we get to choose our leadership. So we're going to be voting on a uh, new uh, speaker. Uh, you know, Rusty, Rusty Bowers is, uh, you know, he's out. And so, yeah. And then we have um, uh, majority leader. Right now, I think for speaker, there's four, four candidates. And then we have majority leader, and I think there's about five or six of them. And then there's majority whip, and there's only one. And, uh, and so, you know, that's, that's the thing. And there's all this buzz. I mean, the, the phone's always ringing and saying, you know, and they're all, you know, everybody's doing things for one another and that kind of thing. So it's been uh, really interesting to see. And, um, and to me, little things matter. The little things will show character of the individual. Honestly, it really does. And, and, and I'm looking, I mean, I, you know, I see some, you know, I see some things here and I see some things there and I'm thinking, oh, that looks good, but this and that, and, you know, and it's just like, okay, you know, and uh, so, you know, be praying, be praying for the uh, Republican uh, caucus there at the House, because the day of the election is, I guess, November 8th, is that what I'm, I'm hearing? Is that November 8th? The very next day, I report it uh, at the, uh, uh, at the House. And we vote on leadership, and everybody's you know every, they have their plan together and everything. Like that. So we want to we want to go ahead and uh, uh, be able to have that together. Uh, we want to pray for Joy. Uh, Joy is at TMC, and uh, uh, they found an eighty. Um, I think that they found an uh, this this was what they found here, is what they said. But there she's looking at an eighty percent uh, blockage in one of her carotidal artery or the carotidal artery and so they're going to have to work with that uh, she's been miserable oh the past couple of months as she's just been miserable so I'm glad that she's there and that they're looking at doing that I think she's going to feel like a you know just a overhauled woman <laughs> you know she's going to have that and um, and then also just uh, you know just be praying for the Wilcox folks in there and you know the Wilcox and uh, and the Douglas Water Basin, you know, and that kind of thing. I think that um, I, I think that there's you know a problem there, and I think that there's going to be some really creative and and innovative solutions come forth. And if we pray for them, I think that they'll be able to really do some good uh, for the community out there. And um, so we'll see we'll see how that all turns. Now the AMA is on the ballot. It is on the November ballot, so uh, you know we're going to be we're going to need to be say one way or another. I'm just afraid that we're going to you know when you get more and more regulation into the uh, yeah, uh, it's just not it's not going to be good. It's not going to be a good thing, uh, you know. So I've got some ideas about that because they they have been handed to me. Now what I got to do is run them through legal and find out can, can this be done. You know, there's a couple of ideas that I got to look at, and uh, can it be done? Some people are going to hear this and they're going to freak out. Man. I know that they're going <laughs> to. So, but it is what it is, and we rely on the Lord. Honestly, we rely on God to be able to help us in 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 all the in the affairs of man. We need to have divine uh, intervention, divine guidance, 
you know, you know, we need to have that. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's pray. And then we're going to have Stephen uh, lead us in some songs. And then we're going to be in Joshua chapter 11 uh, tonight. So, Father, we come before you and we thank you, Lord. And uh, just some of the things that I talked about are, are things that I'd like to bring before you, O oh Lord. And um, just to ask your help and that you would uh, that you would reveal and guide and lead us, Father, not just not uh, uh, individually, but also as as groups of people that are, you know, concerned about different things, the Lord Father, around the, the, the state and around the, the county and also here locally, Lord Father, we pray. Thank you, Father. I thank you for um, being with us. And uh, giving us the salvation, giving us an inheritance, O oh Lord Father, that we might be able to come before you. I thank you that uh, today is uh, Dominic's uh, one year anniversary, 365 days being sober. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. And that's uh, been a, a blessing. Yeah. And I just uh, thank you for that, Lord. And I thank you for uh, the day that Alan Johnson was born. <laughs> and uh and that day happens to be today <laughs> amen and lord we thank you for the church thank you for the church members i pray that you be with each one of them oh lord god uh those that are uh those that are regular here on sunday morning and uh and and those that uh log in father regularly lord father i pray for them uh, that you would just bless them, bless them, bless them, O oh Lord God. Father, we thank you that you've given us an inheritance through Jesus. In Jesus' name, we bless you and praise you, Lord Father God. Amen and amen. 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 Yeah, Lord. Amen. Yeah. So Stephen's uh, getting up there to the piano, and I'm going to go ahead and move the camera in his direction so that we can see what's Jesus. Okay, first one we're going to do is that uh, sheet I gave out above all. All right.
great. Jesus came and brought 
behind me but that's okay uh, <laughs> they're on Facebook you won't be able to see that uh, let's see let me know you're here say hello I can't see any of you so anyway uh, we're in Joshua chapter 11 and uh, just a couple of things you know we've been following the book of Joshua for several weeks now and uh, his he only had two things that he had to do was um, go in and uh, and eliminate, you know, eliminate the Canaanites, okay? Do away with them. And then, uh, and then, um, oh, what is that? He, eliminate the Canaanites and then also appoint each of the land, to uh, divide the land among the tribes. That's what he had to do. So um, in chapter 11, they, um, they went ahead and they, uh, uh, one of the first things that, let's see, am I, chapter 11, good since it's still the kings are gone. Let's go over to chapter 12. Yeah. Um, yeah, because the conquest of the nor northern northern Canaan, we, we talked about that. We did already. And uh, chapter 12, uh, chapter 12 is something that's really interesting because one of the things that, we do, that, that it does, it reviews all the kings that were conquered. Uh, mm -hmm. and and, uh, and, and uh, also there were um, uh, there were 31 tribes that were conquered all together in in that um, in that in that conquering let's see scoring the Ashdod. these are the kings of the territory and the king of that one uh, where is that Ge geographical Bible okay Joshua return. Uh, I did I did my study on on another on another Bible and that one showed that there was 30 31 kings that were conquered um, now uh, there were kings that are conquered by Moses and it goes through all the way up to uh, uh, right across the Jordan River you remember us traveling all the way up there and then uh, and then he uh, we came up uh, they tried to cross through Edom Edom wouldn't let them cross so then they went east, or east, and then they went up that way, up through, uh, uh, let's see, Edom, and then Moab, and then uh, they camped right across Jericho from in, in, in the Jordan River, is where they were at. And so it, it, it goes through the, the ones that uh, Moses, Moses uh, conquered. The, the kings that were conquered by uh, Joshua, uh, and, and it goes through all of these, and I could go through them, but uh, 
uh, you know, just there's not a whole lot of other things here. And you can read that. Um, just 31 kings. There were 31 kings that were um, that were conquered by Joshua, and it lists them all here. There's a lot of them there. And one of the things that uh, one of the things that I think that we always have to look at as Christians is that um, you know, if it wasn't a physical battle, and there's plenty of physical battles taking place today, there are spiritual battles that need to be fought. We talk. I mean, I mention that every time we get together. That we're, we're in spiritual warfare. Paul said, you know, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. So these are strongholds. One of the things you're going to find out here, and I mentioned it just, uh, just, just briefly, is that um, Joshua went in and conquered the urban areas. He went in there and conquered fortified cities, strongholds. These were the, the kings that were in charge of those areas out there, but didn't clean everything. You know, he, 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 he conquered cities and those that were in charge of that. So he was, he was cutting the heads off the snakes, but there was still people that were still around in those areas. It wasn't completely cleaned out. He was going after the strongholds. And I, I like that because if you're going to, if you're going to conquer something, you go right after that, you know, right after the strong, the, the, the strength of that, you, you go right after that. It's got, it's a tactic. It's a, you know, you conquer that, you know, the Geneva convention doesn't let you, you know, go after generals and, and, uh, and, and that kind of stuff to some degree, <laughs> to some degree. But anyway, so Joshua goes in, in there and does that. The only spot that Joshua was not, was, did not complete was going after, and you're going to read, you're going to hear this one word, and which is really great because I mentioned it last week and it was the Anakim. The Anakim, and the Anakim is a name that was taken uh, by the uh, writers of the uh, Star Wars, and the Anakim are actually the enemy. You know, they, they're really the en enemy, and so the Anakim were the same people that prevented the, that 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 scared the twelve the twelve. Um, I mean, the ten the ten spies. They saw the giants. They were the Anakim. The, the Anakim is also the Philistines. They were the big guys. Uh, who was it? Uh, David and uh, Goliath was one of the one of the Anakim. He was he was one of the Philistine. And so they conquered everything. You know, he conquered everything except that. And then we, like I told you, there. You know, you'll see. You know, you'll see that uh, the Philistines will rise up again during um, Sam, Samson. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, during Samuel's time, the kings and that kind of stuff, they, ca they came back and really caused them a lot of problems. So you, you find that. Um, so, so in chapter 13, you're going to find that there are several places that, that were, not, um, were not conquered. Uh, but so, so he, he, uh, he goes ahead and he was, uh, let's start in chapter 13. Now, I just kind of gave, uh, gave you a summary of, of chapter 12. I thought I was in chapter 11. I was really in chapter 12. <laughs> okay. So um, now Joshua was, was old in van Now Joshua was old, advanced in years, and the Lord said to him, "You are old." <laughs> you are old. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that takes care of a bunch of us in this room. <laughs> you are old. <laughs> advanced in years and, are, and there remains very much land yet to be possessed yet, uh, this is the land that yet remains all of the territory of the Philistines all that of the Ger Gershites and Azior east of Egypt and he goes out and, and lists a bunch of them all the way down all the way down all the way down uh, verse 6 and the inhabitants of the mountains of Lebanon as far as the brook Misri Foth and the Sidonians, them I will drive out from before the children of Israel, only divide it by lot as an inheritance, as I have commanded you. Now, therefore, divide this land as an inheritance to the nine tribes and half of the tribe of Manasseh. OK, now the map that's behind me shows exactly where the, the, uh, the tribes went, went. And it's really neat to be able to see how, how they were they were given. Now the big, you know, the big picture here is that God had promised this land over to Abraham, 
This, this was promised to Abraham. There was a deed of trust that's written back in Genesis chapter probably, uh, I can't, I, I'm thinking now, probably anywhere be, about 24, something like that. And, and this, this land was promised, uh, promised to Abraham and his seed, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is now uh, Israel. And now they're, about to, they're, 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 they're inheriting it. And, and God is telling them, you're old now. I want you to take care of this job. Now, the way that they did that is he went ahead and he took one of the priests. And I think there was a third person. And they had already set up the tabernacle at one of the spots. And that's where they begin to divide the land. Okay, that was where it was at. I want you to pay attention to the word inheritance. Okay, because this was given to the, to the children of Israel. And this is a legal term. Okay, now I've been using the word heritage a whole lot. That we have a heritage, but with that heritage comes an inheritance. It there does, you know, and especially especially in a um, um, you know in a family that 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 does that kind of thing that will leave that will leave an inheritance for you, be out of the heritage. I mean, uh, uh, it will leave a um, yes, that's right, and so. Uh, so that's what that's what's happening. He says, now, therefore, divide this land as an inheritance to the nine tribes and a half tribe of Manasseh. Now, there's only nine and a, nine and a half. So that's nine and a half, almost 10. So I thought there was 12 tribes. Do you remember that it was uh, it was Reuben? And I think it was the half tribe of Manasseh, uh, Manasseh that that wanted uh, wanted land on the other side of the Jordan on the east side. They were about to cross over the Jordan and they said, no, we like this land because they were cattle growers. And Moses said, no, you can't. Uh, oh, yeah, you can have the land, but you can't stay here yet. What you need to do is you need to come in with us to battle until we settle everybody else in. OK, now, one of the things that we have to look at here, and I like to I like to see this, you know, just what's happening is that up to this point, through the leadership of Moses and through the leadership of of, um, of Jacob, they have stayed intact, pretty much stayed intact. They are one body moving together, inheriting the promises that God gave to Abraham. Yes. Now, I, and this church, we got to get this in our noggins. <laughs> we got to get this in our head that the only way that we can inherit everything that God has given us is to stay united. Amen. We've got to stay together in order and, and then understand what God has given us as an inheritance or a part of the heritage. You know, because once I, once I started looking to see what they, and everyone got a piece of land. Everyone got a piece of the action. Everybody got uh, their portion of land that was there. It was their responsibility to keep that land and to clear out Remember the rest of the uh, of the of the Canaanites. They were there. Joshua hit hit, hit the uh, the urban areas. Now it's time for the rest of the you know the, those that were assigned the tribe. Uh, the, those that were assigned the, uh, the 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 land. They were supposed to clear it clear, clear it out from the uh, the rest of the inhabitants that were there. They were supposed to clean it out. See because they believed in something else. They taught something totally different than what God was teaching. We, and we've gone through the whole Old Testament now. We, we've gone through the whole law of Moses already. And, and, uh, and he said, no, I want you to clear them out because they're going to be a thorn on your side. And, and we find out later that they, they did trip up and they, they took on some of the teachings and they worshiped some of their gods, the false gods and different things. So it's important that we understand what what inheritance means and what our heritage is all about so so that's what that's what that's where they got to and so it, and it goes all the way down you know it, it goes all the way down and starts listing um starts listing the places all of the city you know where where they were going to go okay and um and all the kingdoms of god let's go to verse 12 here in chapter 13 and it says all of the kingdoms of og I like that name. <laughs> it's a it's Canaanite name, but uh, 
Me, Og. <laughs> Me have birthday. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so he says, um, in Bashan, who uh, who reigned in Ash uh, Ashtaroth and Edri, who remained in the remnant of the giants, uh, for Moses had defeated and cast out these. Nevertheless, the children of Israel did not drive out the Geshurites, and the Mesh and, and it goes through uh, some of the names here, uh, and the uh, Mach uh, Machanites, uh, but the Gershites and the Machanites dwell among the Israelites until this day. Now the boundaries of Levi, only the tribe of Levi, he had given no inheritance. Now this is really cool. We're going to see this here in just a little bit. Of the Lord God of Israel made by fire. Um, now let's see. The sacrifices of the Lord of God of Israel made by fire are their inheritance as he said to them. So they were to serve at the temple. Uh, they were to serve at the, uh, the altar and everything that came through there was their inheritance. They would offer portions of that to the Lord, and then they would keep the rest of it for them and their families, is what that would happen, okay? And then, so it goes through the boundaries of Reuben, the boundaries of Gad, the boundaries of the half-tribe of Manasseh. Now, um, he, they're, they're starting to divide this stuff up, and you can see some of this. Uh, you can't see it very well. This is the Norman Conquest. This isn't the, this isn't the map that I was looking for. Um, and I'll, I'll, yeah, <laughs> I'll have to look for that later. Uh, and then, um, the, and, and then in, cha in chapter fourteen, so they went through. Um, they went. They went through. Let's see. I want to make sure that I catch part of this. So uh, Manasseh methods of sending, setting tribal. Uh, now let's go over to chapter fourteen. These are the areas which the children of Israel inherited in the land of Canaan which Eleazar, Eleazar, the priest, Joshua, the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed as an inheritance to them. Their inheritance was by lot, as the Lord had commanded them by the hand of Moses for the nine tribes and the half tribe of Manasseh. That's the one that we were talking about. For Moses had given an inheritance an inheritance of the two tribes and half tribe on the other side of the Jordan. But to the Levites, he had... He had given no inheritance among them. For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim, and they gave no part to the Levites in the land except the cities to dwell in, in their common lands and of their livestock and property. As the Lord had commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did as they divided the land. Now, one of the things you're going to see, and I, I got to get this. So hold on just a second, guys. I'll be right back. But one of the things that we we, we need to see uh, is just how uh, I'll, I'll go to the one map that I think I'm, I want to I want to show you, and uh, and then we're gonna then we're gonna talk about uh, then we're gonna talk about okay chapter fourteen. Let's see what do we got here? Not much. Uh, and then he goes there. Oh yeah, you'll be able to, now you see it. You see the uh, so so that's that's kind of how the, 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 the land was divided. You, you can see how the land was divided there. I'm gonna go into chapter 14. Let me see. Yeah, I'm gonna go over to chapter 14. Uh, let's see what we have here. No, nope, not there yet. Oh, I lost. 
lost it. <laughs> I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But you did see you did see the, the you did see the map just briefly, mm -hmm. just briefly. <laughs> it was a patchwork. But one of the things that one of the things that I really I really liked about this is that everybody took everybody took part. And to me, the uh, uh, what this one this what this says to me is that um, every every Christian has a part in the inheritance. You know, the, the, we're looking at we're looking at Old Testament stuff. Everybody went to their places, had a job to do. And they they stayed together for for this this portion of their of their existence. Now all of us are born again, and we have the Spirit of God in us. And God has given us gifts. He has given gifts to each one of us. And and uh, and Joshua's tribe wasn't any more important than all the other tribes together. I mean, he was he was he was the leader, but they got their portion of of land too. And what that says to me is that each one of us should be able to be active in the church with the inheritance and the gifts that God has given us. You know, all of us, we need to recognize the fact that all of us are in this together. And what we need to do is move in and occupy, move in and, and, and begin to move things, you know, begin, begin to really take over that land the way that God has called us to, to take over. And that means that wherever we go, we need to be able to uh, be part of that, you know. And that's what that's what I see. That's what I see in this in the, in this section of, of Joshua as he appoints the land to each of the tribes, and that's all that they're covering at this in in this portion of the scripture is uh, is is just the appointments of the uh, of their. And then the the interesting part. Did you? Just kind of briefly see that one um, where the patchwork was at. Okay. Uh, and I'll try to get this one up next next week. Okay. The as you look at the as you look at the nation of Israel, all of the all of the um, all um, um, let's see all of the tribes gave the Levites cities to live in. It's. They're sprinkled throughout all of Israel. This, the, 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 tribe, the, the tribe of Levi is sprinkled throughout all of Israel. And what, what, um, what God had commanded to uh, the Levites was that they were to, ta they were to do their duty in, at, the uh, at the tabernacle and eventually the temple. But when they were off duty, they were back home and they're sprinkled throughout all of the nation of Israel. Their duty was to go around and teach the word of God to the tribal leaders at the gates of the cities. That was their job. And so when you see when you see the map, it's like, oh, look at all the all the all the places. Now each one of the tribes had their influence here, influence here, influence here, influence here, but the tribe of Levi had influence throughout the whole country. It was really cool. And so, but God had appointed them to serve at the tabernacle and also to teach the word of God. So their influence was to make sure that they were being taught the word at the city gates. And sometimes they were like the synagogue. Synagogues were not the place of worship. It was a place of instruction. The, the place of the worship was in Jerusalem. And so that, that was one of the things that we find in the Old Testament, which was really cool. So... When we look at this, you know, I, I look at this and, and, and Paul referred to, you know, the duties of the Levites as, you know, those that uh, work at the altars live by the altar. And, and he also says those that live, live by the gospel, those that uh, preach the gospel should live by the gospel. OK, he talks about that. And so one of the things that we find here is that with the Levites, they didn't have boundaries. You know, and a lot of times we look at, you know, a lot, a lot of times we look at territories, you know, and, and we see that. And I'm thinking, no, God has called us to to influence the whole thing. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like leaven put into a lump of dough. And he says it'll leaven the whole thing. See, that's what he wants of us. You know, it was just just a neat picture. Just I just I just saw a picture there that, you know, God sometimes will give portions to some people, but then he calls others to have influence over the whole thing, which is really cool. And so, uh, 
just just thoughts as we we look at some of this kind of stuff in chapter 16 we see that the boundaries of joseph the boundaries of ephraim the boundaries of the half tribe of manasseh um were still there now uh what we're going to find and when when i see that uh the remaining remaining tribes moved to israel uh, i mean uh, uh shiloh uh caleb came up to um caleb came up to um moses and said look moses you remember the days that uh, that we were promised? He says, "I want my mountain. <laughs> I want my mountain." See, because Caleb and Joshua were the two faithful ones to the Lord, and 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 they were promised an inheritance by God, by Moses, and by God that they would they would uh, uh, occupy uh, some of those places. And so, um, so he was he was he was uh, asked to. Uh, he, he, he asked Joshua for that inheritance and he was able to occupy that portion and that was given to him. So because he was faithful, he was blessed. Yes. Yeah. And, be, and, and the more faithful we are to God, the more he blesses. It is amazing. Yes. It is amazing, you know. Um, I, you know, I was, I was, I, I went out and visited somebody today and then we were talking about things, you know, and they were, you know, they were talking about how, um, they've been to different kinds of churches and things like that, where they're asking for money because they, they have these big aspirations on big buildings and things like that. And it's just like, wow, you know, I, God has been faithful. It's amazing how God has been faithful. And when you build the body it it just happens it just happens you know our our you know just you 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 see our little group here and it faithful you got you know the body's faithful here it's wonderful to be able to see what god has done and is doing you know through you because you have that portion of your inheritance here and and because of that you know this levite is able to get out to places that are are beyond the boundaries of this little place. It's just amazing to be able to see what's, what's happening. It really is. And, and, I, and I appreciate what God is doing in, uh, uh, through that. And, and, and it's just wonderful. So um, anyway, I kind of gave you a, a quick overview. I'll probably do some more highlights today. I had to go out of, uh, so, so we'll, 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 we'll go back and, and talk about the inheritance of Caleb and, um, and then find out where, where um, Joshua ended up at, and then um, and then they end up they they end up going to Shiloh. Uh, Shiloh is the place of worship in in ancient Israel before David before David came in and conquered um, uh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem was a very hard place to get for the for the uh, for for Israelites. It was a fortified city. They had to fight hard for it. And uh, they finally got it, uh, you know, uh, it was finally released to them. So, all right, guys. So that's that's it for today. And um, uh, it's always good to be able to look through some of the Old Testament and just see how God has um, just brought the nation of Israel through. You know, we can find correlations along those lines. You know, there's a lot of that that's happening there. God wanted to give them a home, a place where they could uh, live and thrive and then to show um, his glory to the other nations around them. Uh, and, and so he, he did that. So that's where we're at. Now, the nation of Israel is going to get established in the next few, in the next several years. They're going to get established. And, um, and, and we'll, we'll see how that all works out. And, and then the drama starts. <laughs> you know, from there, because from there you go into the judges. And, you know, Joshua finally uh, is gone. The leader of the, na you know, the leader of the people of God is gone. And now they're relying on judges, which is, which is a totally different concept than what God had used through Moses and Joshua. And so it's really interesting. We'll be talking about leadership and uh, also how, you know, how God judges nation and then delivers them. So, uh, and then we have, you know, Gideon and, and uh, uh, Samson, Delilah, and all that stuff. So, Father, we thank you and bless you for this evening. Lord, that we're able to come together for a few 
uh, minutes, Lord Father, to be reminded of your word, of the inheritance and the heritage that you have given us, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you that uh, we are Judeo-Christians, Lord, and that the promises that were given to Abraham, Lord Father, many of them are passed on to us, O oh Lord. And we thank you, Father, for them. And then for the covenant that is based that is a better covenant than the first, based on better promises and, uh, and, and on better things, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you that we will inherit, Father. We will be in heaven one of these days, Father God, and uh, we will know uh, all things as you have promised that to us as part of our heritage. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Well, there's Karen. She checked in. <laughs> Very good. Well, God bless you all. And thank you for, you know, logging in and uh, being with us tonight.